Welcome into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I am so excited to be joined by offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Nick, thank you so much for being with us today. Pleasure for having me. Thank you guys for having me. I, I wish it was under more exciting circumstances. <laughs> you are a, a super fun guy to talk to, and I'm sure we will still have as much fun as possible on the show. But of course, after a game like that, it's a, it's a little bit more challenging. But tell me just what it was like to be out there and the idea of the difference in that first and second half. And to try to explain, I mean, I don't know that I've seen much more of a tale of two halves, in, especially if it weren't for that Colts game Saturday. Yeah. Um, what, what did that feel like, and, and how did you guys kind of try to come to terms with what shifted so much? Um, I mean, it was crazy. Um, like you said, it was just a big shift. Like the first half, uh, I feel like we was on fire. We was kicking it on all cylinders. Um, offense was doing good. Defense was doing good. Um, special teams was doing good. Um, and then, you know, the second half, you know, unfortunately, you know, things just weren't clicking. Um, and I don't know, it just, I don't know, it kind of got out of hand and, you know, we was, you know, trying to figure it, everything out. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, we couldn't get a job done. So it was just, it was just a, it was just a world of like emotions and like shape shifting and stuff like that. It was just crazy. Yeah, the Will Ferrell glass case of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so it was the second highest scoring game this season. Uh, just the second time you guys have opened at least a 17 point lead uh, before allowing a score. Um, what are the things that you feel like were going so well that you can carry with you? Because that's always, of course, after a loss, you, you want to learn from it. You want to say, leave the bad, take the good. So what are the things that you feel like happened to get to that 17-0 to 0 point that can be recreated, that can be taken with you? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest thing in the first half was we were just clicking. Um, every, like, communication was great. Um, like, we were just all clicking together. Um, we were all on the same page. Um, I, can, I kind of felt like it kind of slipped in the second half, um, but that's something we definitely need to work on. We always try to build on our communicating skills and stuff like that, so that's definitely something we're going to try to build on in the future. I know it's got to be uh, challenging when any turnover happens, but when there start being several in a row, just kind of the, the feeling that that creates. Um, and, and it had been something you guys had, had been good at overall is protecting the ball this year so what was it about this game that seemed to create that was it something they were doing was it more of a self-inflicted thing just what why was this game suddenly so different in in that area um i don't know it was it was kind of both it was kind of us it was kind of them um it was just a it was kind of like a snowball effect um and you know at, at the end of the day you know the biggest thing was to just stay calm stay poised don't panic um, and, you know, we were just trying to figure out what was going on. And then, you know, as we were trying to figure it out, more and more kept happening. And, then, you know, unfortunately, we just ran out of time, you know. Yeah. What, what is the message during that time? Who, who are the guys saying it, whether it's coaches or players? And um, in those moments when, you know, football is such a game of momentum and yeah. you, you feel it shifting, yeah. what, what's being said? Who's saying it? What, what are the effective messages during a time like that? Uh, I mean, first, is, there's Tom. You know, Tom's the leader of the offense, uh, leader of the team, really. But, you know, Tom's out there, you know, getting us up and, you know, telling us, you know, we got to go out there and play. Uh, me, I'm always in the huddle telling everybody, you know, we strive for perfection. You know, let's go get it. Why not get six this, uh, this series? Um, you got Robert Haynes. He's the leader of the offensive line. Um, he's constantly telling us, keeping us together. Um, you got you got uh, Coach Harold Goodwin. Um, he's constantly, you know, in in my ear, in uh, Haynes's ear. You know, keep the guys up. You know, keep keep us going. Um, we're the leaders. So, um, I mean, you you got a lot of guys on the offense, and defense um, that you know just are leaders. Um, but those those are just a few. You are a guy that is always so upbeat and happy, and someone that that brings a lot of joy to the building. Is that a role that even though you are so new in your ro in your role on the offensive line, it sounds like coaches even already expect that of you when you're out there to be in a pretty big leadership role. Is, is that fair? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and I take it. Uh, I take on that position. Um, I'm happy that you know my coaches and you know my teammates trust me to do that. You know, but that's that's something I've been doing. Uh, you know, since high school. You know, I've always been put in that leadership role, and it's kind of naturally grown on to me. Um, even my rookie year here. Um, I was on P squad, but you know I was, you know, we was in P squad going against the starting D, and like you know, you you can check the film, like we we get a touchdown or something. I'm screaming down the field, like you know, we we playing <laughs> like the you game. Won the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's that's just kind of been something um, I've always done. I, I've always been in that leadership role. I was a captain all through college, um, so I mean, no, I definitely, you know, love that my coaches and my teammates trust me to be that 
leader um, and to keep the energy going and, you know, hopefully I don't disappoint. We're talking offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Um, two tough games in a row in terms of a, from a mental standpoint of coming back from, I know that no loss is ever good or fun, but I'm sure there are varying degrees of how hard they can be to move on from or, or get over. Um, what is the mindset now you think of the team? What do you guys do with this to try to make sure that these last two don't affect what you guys are trying to accomplish in, in the last bit of the season? And, and maybe which one is harder to come from of just getting beat pretty badly versus the having the lead and losing it? Does it, does it feel like one is harder than the other? I mean, honestly, they're both hard. Um, I feel like, you know, you lose by one, you lose by 100. It's going to be hard regardless. Um, I, this, this past loss against uh, Cincinnati, it hurt. Um, and it hurt because, you know, we, we were up at one point in time. Um, we thought we were going to win the game, um, and then you just seen the snowball effect of everything going bad. Um, but I mean, the biggest thing is like you know, just we just got to you know really hone in on the details, watch the film, uh, you know, learn from our mistakes, and figure out ways to communicate. Um, and it's not just us; it's the coaches, um, it's it's the whole team. You know, we all just trying to figure out what we can do better. And how about the penalties? I know that that's a tough one because. It's like everybody knows not to do it. Yeah. So uh, what is what is the challenge of making sure that actually gets put into effect? And, and what has maybe been, in, in your mind, the culprit for a lot of them of, there, I know there's kind of acceptable and unacceptable penalties, right? That there's yeah. some that just come from playing football and, yeah. and some that are probably more preventable in y'all's mind. So where do you think you guys have stood recently on that and, and how to try to move on from that and improve that you know what are the coaches saying about it and what are you guys as players trying to do about it yeah the coaches definitely put a big emphasis on penalties um because penalties at the end of the day we're just beating ourselves at that point so you know we don't want to we don't really want to play against ourselves we want to play against the opponent um so we we practice those things in practice you know our coaches they you know the the, the next day in the team meeting they bring up those penalties like we don't just you know look past them um my coach in general you know i I got a holding call this past game, um, but you know I, my coach. You know he always coached us on you know keeping our hands tight, um, you know not not holding, you know just letting it go and stuff like that. And unfortunately, you know I just you know I made a mistake, um, and that kind of set us back. Um, so I we can't really make those mistakes. Um, but that's the biggest thing. Like we just we practice it. Um, we practice not making those mistakes, and you know just can't make them. I know that this this game was where it felt like pretty balanced offensively. Uh, is that how it felt to you guys? And, and did it feel a little bit more, especially you know early in the game, like the the game plan that you hope for and you even as O-linemen, which you guys like to be able to do of where there's there were a lot of great passing plays, but y'all were running it pretty effectively with both backs. Um, what worked in terms of that, of having both sides of the game going well? I mean, we always, like as an offensive line, we love running the ball. Um, so whenever we get those run plays, you know, we, we really try to make them go. Um, we love we love the pass game too. Uh, we try to keep it balanced as much as we can. Um, you know, at the beginning of the game, like you know, we started running it. We had some play actions. You know, everything was just going good. Um, and then towards more towards the end of the game, you know, we started we ran it a little bit. We started passing more. Um, but I mean, first half was you know pretty good. Like you know, we, like I said, we got to run and we got to do everything. So we just got to keep it going. Like once once we start trailing, that's when you know we start passing more and stuff like that. But we just got to keep it going. So this game in particular, uh, play of the offensive line, what is probably the, the grade you think you guys are going to receive from your coaches this week? Um, as an offensive line, um, probably a C, C plus, maybe a B. Um, I feel like, you know, we, as an offensive line, we are, you know, five guys on the same page for the most part. Uh, we might have a tick here and there, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we, one thing about us, you know, we, we play our tails off. Um, you constantly see us running after the ball, um, you know, just playing to the whistle. You know, we just, you know, we guys in the trenches and, you know, we, we take we take pride in it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I say, you know, C plus B. We didn't win the game, so I can't give us an A. So. Yeah, and uh, I know that it was pretty great to see, especially some of these wide receivers putting up more of the numbers that you guys have been hopeful for and, and knowing they're capable of. So what was it like to watch you know, guys like especially Mike getting going mm -hmm. so early in the, in the first quarter, and he and Chris both finishing with 83 yards each, and Chris getting another touchdown. So uh, those two guys in particular, what was it like to, to watch them kind of do their thing? Man, it's it's literally like a it's like a kid watching, like, his hero, his idols. <laughs> like, I mean, just watching Mike. I mean, Mike's awesome. You know, all our Roberts, he was awesome, awesome, but, you know, Mike the OG. So, like, anytime, you know, Mike score or anything like that, you know, we all hype. 
you know, CG my man. Y'all done seen it on TV and stuff like that. Every time CG score, I'm right there. Uh, so every time CG score, like, I'm trying to find him. You know, we trying to do something, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it was good to see our guys, you know, go out there, you know, get some get some catches. You know, Russ got the big touchdown. Um, you know, all those guys, uh, you know, Devin, he's coming up. He's doing pretty good on the offense. Uh, so, yeah, like, we definitely get hype when the guys, you know, score them touchdowns, catch them big catches and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, Russell Gage, I mean, man, first time in his career back-to-back -back games with a touchdown and a career high, two touchdowns in one game mm -hmm. now. So um, what what is it like to watch a guy like him where he struggled with – being hurt, not being available, and it's his first year with the new team. And then to see these last couple games, I, I know that that's got to be a, a really cool thing as a teammate to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, like he's been battling injuries and stuff like that. So, you know, to see him get to finally go out there, play his game, and, you know, because I, I like, you know, I see it in Russ's eyes. You know, he, he's been set back with his injury. He'd be wanting to be out there, but he can't. So to see him actually out there scoring, helping his team, like I know, I know it's everything to him because he's helping his team. So, you know, we, we definitely be happy for Russ. Um, and, you know, we hope that, you know, we can keep it going with Russ. You mentioned Devin Tompkins. Uh, that's got to be cool to watch. As someone who has been on the practice squad yourself, mm -hmm. uh, to see a guy like that work his butt off all training camp and all season almost. And then now, uh, what was it like to see that return he got last week in particular and then now this week getting nine yards on, on an offensive play? It was awesome. Like It was like a proud big brother uh, <laughs> moment, honestly, because like, like you said, I was on P-Squad. You know, I know that feeling and everything. And then, you know, to see him get called up and, you know, to see how hard he worked and everything like that, it just reminded me of myself. Um, so, yeah, like Devin's been doing a great job. You know, we love him. Um, and, you know, I wish the best for him. You know, I, I hope he continues with his success and everything. He's a great kid. All right, we have more coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with offensive lineman Nick Leverett, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I am joined by offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Uh, we talked a lot about especially the offense, that whole first uh, segment, but then also the defense. Man, they came out firing uh, early on, and, and I, what was it like to get to watch such a fast start by them against such an incredible offense like the Bengals. You know, you get your sack by the guys for a three and out. You got Carlton getting an interception. Those first couple plays, that's got to fire you guys up as an offense as well. Absolutely. It's, you know, I, I, I was at the point I was ready to grab my popcorn. I was just enjoying the show. <laughs> I mean, nah, our defense, you know, they're, they're great. You know, we got, we got a lot of stars. You got Devin, Levante. You know, we got all these guys out there, you know, ball hawks, you know, out there trying to get it every play. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely exciting watching our guys, you know, go out there doing their thing, getting sacks, interceptions, um, and all that. So, yeah, I, I love watching them. I know that you guys always kind of trash talk a lot during practice. It's always kind of funny, the whole <laughs> the offense versus defense thing. But then the game comes, and it's everybody's all one big family. But uh, I know that Carlton, in particular, um, second most passes defensed of his career and against a guy like Jamar Chase. Um, yeah, what was it like to watch a guy like Carlton ball out like that? Man, that's huge. Uh, salute to him. I mean, yeah, Carlton, he's, he's a dog for sure. You know, I didn't even know that, but that's great for him. Uh, it's so funny because, like, you know, we, me and Carlton, like, you know, he do his little grave digger thing. Yeah. And I tell him every time, like, hey, CD, like, you know, when I dump somebody on the ground, look for me because I'm going to be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're going to dig your digger own stuff, You so. want to join the grave diggers. I, hey, look, I'm going to be an honorary uh, grave honorary, digger. Honorary, the first offensive member of it. That's yeah. that's pretty good. I like that. I so, think. yeah. yeah you, nah. I wish you could run out there and row the boat with them, you know, all that nah, stuff. I can't, so I can't do that. It'd take me a long time yeah. to get up. <laughs> <laughs> that takes all the energy the whole yeah, rest of the time. Nah, that's I can't amazing. do that. <laughs> well, so take me back to, uh, to training camp as – all these battles are happening that, you know, it's going to be a new look offensive line one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're fighting for, you know, what looks like the left guard spot. Then suddenly Jensen goes down and then you're having to figure out the center spot, left guard spot, what all that's going to look like. So what was that whole process like for you during training camp as, I mean, b position battles are always tough. And yeah. then it's like you kind of are even thrown into multiple position battles all mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so the biggest thing for me was, you know, I worked my tail off. Um, I put the work into the workout. Um, I literally was doing everything I could to solidify either starting position, whether it was center or left guard. Um, so it was definitely a battle. You know, I was here like five o'clock every morning during camp, just watching film before everybody else got here. I was like the last guy to leave the practice field, just, you know, trying to get myself better, you know, just truly trying to do everything I could in my power uh, to get a starting spot. You know, unfortunately it didn't happen, but you know, Later on down the road, something happened. Uh, I did get a starting job. Uh, so, you know, I'm very thankful. Um, but my biggest mindset was to control what I can control. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, even though I didn't get the starting spot, I was ready to, 
you know, come in if my teammates needed me, if my team needed me. Um, and just every week I was still preparing as if I was a starter. And what did it mean to the offensive line when everybody realized Jensen was going to be out for an extended period? What are the things that maybe people don't even realize he did for the offensive line and, and then just so what it meant to lose him and then the ways that maybe he still tried to, to help you guys out since then? Yeah, like Jensen – you know he's still our leader. Um, you know he's he's the fearful leader. You guys see all the time the the red headed bandit. You know he's he's that guy. Um, you know when we lost him, you know he he made an emphasis. He was like, you know I might not be on the field with you, but I'm still gonna be here. You know I'm still gonna. I got any questions or anything like that? Like I'm still here, and he's been doing a great job with that. He's been in meetings. Uh, he's been all around. He's been helping us a lot. Um, and that's a big deal because that's not an inevitable thing that yeah. that's not always the case and it's not even really required you know a guy can be just working on his rehab on his own you mm -hmm. know wouldn't necessarily mean that was a bad thing but I mean that's that says a lot about him that he was still going to do that because that's got to be hard for him to to sit there and watch too absolutely it just shows his true character and how much of a leader he truly is you know um, even without being out there on the field he's still you know doing leader things and you know he's still hanging around helping us out so we're very thankful for him we love him and you know we can't wait for him to get back out there with us and what have you seen from Hainsey stepping in to fill those very big shoes that you, you talked about? I mean, that's a, that's a tall order for anybody, much less someone that is, you know, starting for the first time, had to switch positions to a very different one, and, yeah. you know, just to see the way he's handled it. Hainsey's been doing a great job. Hainsey stepped in the, the position as if, like, he's been doing it for a long time. You know, he's out there, you know, calling, calling the shots. He's truly leading the ship. Um, you know, major salute to him because he's really doing a fantastic job. Uh, so yeah, like major, major, major salute to him. And explain the challenge of that because you've you've done tackle and guard some in, in your football career, yeah. and the idea of tackle, <laughs> guard, center of the shift in all three of those things, and to people who haven't played offensive line and just think, oh, it's all offensive line, how challenging those three different positions are from each other. It's like going from driving a sports car to a eighteen wheeler <laughs> to a van. Back to a sports car. I mean, it's all a big uh, shift change. Um, when you're playing tackle, you're going against, you know, faster guys. Um, so, you know, you got to change, you know, your certain techniques and stuff like that. When you're playing guard, you know, you're going against more stout, stronger guys. So, you know, you got to really bulk up, change some technique in there. Um, and when you're playing center, it's, it's more, you know, center is center's a physical role, but it's more mental because you got to lead the ship at the end of the day. You got to have make sure all five of the guys are on the same page. Um, so, like, from a mental standpoint you know you really got to dig in and stuff like that and you know fortunately it's helped me out playing center because like that's helped me like learn all five positions mm -hmm. and like to be able to go out there more comfortable with, like you know the center aspect you know has helped me tremendously once I started playing center you know I understood it before but like once I really started playing center everything just took off from there that's huge and how is your chemistry uh, with Hainsey at this point and, and the ways that it's grown even since you became a starter? It's real good. Um, you know, it's like I told him from the beginning, and it, it honestly feel like this. It's like two centers on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes, like, he can't get the mic points out and stuff like that because he got his hand, his head between his legs. But, you know, I'm back there. You see me on the film. I'm back there looking at Tom, getting the communication from him, and I'm, like, out there calling the shots too. Um, and, you know, he trusts me. I trust him. You know, our coaches trust us a lot. They see how hard we work. So, you know, me and Haynes' chemistry is pretty good. You know, me and him always watching the film together. You know, we always stay after, you know, trying to figure out ways we can help improve our offense and stuff like that. So, yeah, me and Haynes are pretty tight. Yeah, that's incredible. We're talking offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Uh, how about your chemistry with Donovan on the other side? That's the thing about being a guard. You got yeah. you got two different marriages you're, you're juggling <laughs> out here and, and the chemistry there. So, so tell me how it's gone with Donovan. And I know that had to have been kind of hard to – replace someone that he'd played with for, for so long and had just such an unspoken chemistry with. Absolutely. Um, our, our chemistry is pretty good, too. Um, my biggest thing was, you know, just trying to figure out how to make Donovan as, you know, comfortable as possible, you know, and that that took me talking to Ali. It took me talking to Donnie. Um, but it's been going pretty good, you know, communication-wise. You can see week to week we're growing. Um, you know, we're finding out new terminology that will help each other out. You know, we, we ask each other, you know, during the film, you know, do you like this? Do you like me doing this? You know, yada, yada, yada vice versa. Will this help me out? Yada, yada, yada. He asked me. So, you know, you, we could definitely build that chemistry. We're definitely building that chemistry. Um, we're my, we might not be, you know, I might not be Ali right now, um, kind of like with his cuff with him being comfortable, but, you know, we're definitely building that chemistry. And, you know, you can tell that he's liking me more and more, um, and he's more comfortable. 
That, so you did talk to Ali about ways to, to try to fill his shoes. What were uh, what were some of the pieces of advice he gave, or just how nice was that to, to have him to be able to, to talk with? Oh, it was great. Um, his, his biggest thing was, you know, just over-communicating uh, with Donnie. You know, like, the thing is, like, it, even with myself, like, even, like, the simple stuff, just talking about it, you know, it, it'll, it'll make you more comfortable. It'll make you more, you know, ready to play. So that was the biggest thing, just over-communicating with everything. Um, and, you know, sometimes I over-communicate, and sometimes, you know, he got to fix me. So I mean, it's it's a it's a big brother little brother love. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing is just you know over communicating, communicating everything. And then when there's a teammate going through some struggles, maybe you know on or off the field, or you know just when there's some some plays that we know that you know Donovan would like to have back recently. How do you try to handle that as the one standing next to him, the teammate? You know whether it's in the game or after that in the team meeting rooms, you know, just what are what are the best ways you feel like you can try to be a good teammate in those situations? I mean, to to tell, like, to let the guys know, like, that play is gone. Mm -hmm. um, you can't harp on that. You can't get that play back. So there's there's no need to, you know, keep dwelling on that play. Like, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And, like, the only thing we can do to help our team now at this point is to just move forward and make sure it don't happen again. Um, like, I, I think it was, like, the Cleveland game. Um, he had got a flag. And, you know, he was really upset. And I was like, Donnie, like, don't worry about it, like, let it go. Yep. Let it go. Like, it's done. Um, and, you know, I'm glad he listened to me because, you know, for like, no, I don't think it was a clean game. It was another game. But fortunately, we was able to go out and score again, and, you know, it was a good game. Yeah. And I know Shaq Mason, also a, a big guy added to the, the line this year, and I feel like he's a little bit more of the quiet type where people don't know as much about him. And in some ways with the offensive line, that can be a good thing because it's like, well, we're not hearing his name. And <laughs> y'all are the one position where that is a good thing. Yeah. Um, so tell us, for those of us that are just like, oh, yeah, Shaq Mason, we never hear his name. We don't really know what's going on. <laughs> tell us tell us what he's brought, what he's been doing, and, and how nice it is to have an, a veteran like that be added to the line when there are so many other new and younger guys. Absolutely. Shaq's an awesome guy. Um, me, me and Shaq, uh, we pick on each other because, like, I swear we're, like, the two shortest offensive guards in the NFL. <laughs> like, and I think he's shorter than me. We and him, like, give each other, you know, a hard time about Which it. Which is so funny. It's not like y'all are short people. Like, as someone <laughs> who stands next to you all the time. Everything is so relative. Like, if people hear that, they're imagining, like, short people. And it's like, no, what? how tall are you? It's like short people, short offensive guards yeah. in the NFL are, like, 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, right, and, and I'm like, like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but, nah, Shaq's awesome. Like, he, he's definitely a leader. He, he, he might not, you know, be the rah-rah type of guy, but he's definitely a leader. Um, Shaq's definitely somebody I look up to. Um, you know, like I said, like, you know, us being shorter offensive guards, you know, I'm, I'm constantly like just listening to what he say, you know, I truly look up to him. Um, he's always teaching me things, um, different techniques that help me in my game. Um, but yeah, Shaq's definitely a great guy. He's a, he's a hard worker, um, ten tenacious type of guy, um, go after it, everything. He's a great guy. What are some of those things that you feel like you've been able to work on with your game, the little things you've focused on and, and maybe where you've improved the most since earning the starting role? Um, my biggest thing in the beginning uh, was my hand placement and pass protection. Um, I used to kind of loop my hands out. Guys would catch me in my chest um, and just boom me back in the pocket. Um, so one thing I worked on was uh, just throwing my hands better. Um, you know, of course, you know, finishing, that's something I never really had a problem with. But like, you know, just taking that to the extra mile. Um, and just, you know, understanding the game better, um, not just offensive line, but like, you know, wide receiver stuff, uh, running back stuff and stuff like that. So, you know, I can communicate to those guys better, you know, when, you know, we're trying to talk about different screens or run plays and where to, where to hit the gap and stuff like that. You know, I can understand what they're saying so I can, you know, correlate to them. Um, but that's just the biggest thing. Like, my big, like in the beginning, throwing my hands um, and, you know, uh, just being able to communicate with the rest of the team. And then uh, Tristan, I mean, man, just what he's done since coming in as a rookie is incredible. And part of why it is so sad when he went down with an injury. Yeah. Um, so what is it like to miss a guy like him? What does that mean to the offensive line when, when he's not there? And just why is he so good that we all know, like, this is a guy that is, he just does not give up sacks. Like, he's been killing it. What is it about his game that you see getting to watch that film every week that just blows your mind? He's just a freak athlete. Like, <laughs> like he's just the one percent of the one percent. Wow. Like he, like it's so crazy. Like one. So you're saying you could not jump out of a pool? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I could jump out of. Oh a pool. yeah, of course. Because you're also the one percent of the one percent. Yeah, of yeah course. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, like, like even that, like you know, my rookie year, we came in together, and like you know, like his whole pre-draft thing, like it was just like him jumping out of the pool, and I'm just like, 
<laughs> went to a this? pool. I was like, I can't do that. What? <laughs> this pool is like almost taller than me. <laughs> um, but nah, he he's a hard worker as well. Um, like I said, we came in together, so we spent a lot of time together. Um, been here three years together. You know, we worked out together a lot. You know, we've hung out a lot. Um, he's truly like a brother to me. Um, it's crazy because he like he's like way younger than me, um, but we're like here together. That's so funny. Um, but like he he's he's a good guy. He's a great player. Um, he's a hard worker. Um, he's a phenomenal player. You know, he he's definitely gonna be one of the greatest to ever play the position. Um, and you know, I I look up to him. You know, just as much as everybody else do, because you know, just like I said, like he he's a he's a he's a hard worker. And it shows on the field. And, you know, I try to resemble my play with my hard work and everything. Um, but, yeah, like, nah, Tristan's a tremendous dude. And Josh Wells has had to step in for him. And then there was even a brief period in the game where Brandon Walton had to step in where that meant there was not a single person on the offensive line from the Super Bowl year uh, in terms of the starting lineup that was out there. Uh, that's a lot of turnover to deal with. Um, how did you see guys like, you know, Brandon and, and Josh when he's had to step in and then how everyone handles it when suddenly – you got someone new again on your side, right? As you guys are getting this figured out, and Shaq's got someone new on his other side. I mean, just all the ways that you guys have handled that, and, and how do you think it's gone? I mean, so the thing about Josh and Brandon, like you could truly tell those guys are detailed in their work. Um, they pay attention because you know they step in, and like you know, it's not Tristan Wirfs out there, but you know, it's a guy like Josh Wells or Brandon Walton who's in there solidifying the job, getting everything done, you know, not giving up sacks and everything like that. Um, so, I mean, major kudos to those guys, you know, especially Josh, you know, he's been here the past couple of weeks, you know, and for Tristan, you know, he's, he's really been playing his tail off. Um, you know, he's in, he's, he's watching the extra film and stuff like that. He, he's prepared, like, and this, this is stuff he's been doing. Like, like me, I, I'm watching the extra film, like before I was a star, you know, preparing as if I was a star Josh the same way. Um, Josh is a very hardworking man. Um, and it reflects on the field. Brandon the same way. Whenever Brandon stepped in, you know, he didn't disappoint. Um, there wasn't a drop down. Like, you know, guys really went in there and did their job. And that just, you know, it's a major salute to them because that just shows how hard they work. All right. Well, we still have more coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with offensive lineman Nick Leverett, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I'm joined by offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Uh, so I know that uh, Luke, you and, and Luke Gedeke, of course, have, have traded positions a little bit this year. And I'd love to hear what you've seen from him and how he's handled both having to go through the injury and, and just what's gone on and just, you know, the ways he's improved even since the, the start of the season. Yeah, nah, Luke is a great kid. Uh, he's definitely, like, <laughs> he's a meathead. You know, that, that's probably <laughs> one of the strongest rookies I've ever, one of the strongest guys I've ever seen in my life. You know, yeah. he, he's definitely a hard worker. Um, he's one of those guys he's constantly trying to learn. He, you know, I think he takes the alley. He takes me. He takes as our coach all the time. Like, he's constantly trying to learn. Um, so you can see that definite growth in him. Uh, he's definitely wanting to grow and definitely wanting to learn. Um, you know, they, they putting him everywhere right now, left guard, right guard, you know, just – trying to see what he can do and everything like that. He's been doing pretty good. So, you know, that, the sky, sky's the limit to that kid. You know, he, he's definitely going to be a great player. I remember hearing that when he got drafted that it was like his life is football and lifting and eating, which still really are related to football. Is that is that fair? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I've, I've never seen a guy eat so much and lift so much. And, like, he like he's strong, like, so strong. Like, yeah. And he seems like he's that, like, farm strong. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, I, I could see him, like. like just picking up a tractor and, yeah. Or a horse. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he's so strong. But, yeah, like. He's going to continue to get better, like, definitely. Who do you think eats the most on the offensive line? Probably Luke. Yeah? Absolutely. Probably, you know, it, at last year was a tight race, but nah, it's definitely Who, Luke. What was it a tight race between last year? It's like a tight race between Tristan, uh, Donnie, just those big guys, but like, nah. Luke's <laughs> outpacing him now? Yeah, Luke, Jeez. like, Luke eats so many times a day. It's like, <laughs> I'm like... I can only imagine what it's like in the bathroom, dog. Cause like, <laughs> like <laughs> you eat so much. Like, I know your stomach. Like, and the acid is just like crazy oh right now. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, are you? Where are you on that list of, of people? You know, like, I don't know. Like, I I used to eat a lot, um, but I mean, you know, I I like, you know, I'm constantly, you know, working out and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know. I just I try to eat a lot. I don't. Eat, I can't eat as much as I used to. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I mean, I just can't eat, even like get close to eating as much as I used to. I remember Allie talked about the fact that he had to work so hard to be big enough to play the position, and then now we've seen that he's just 
like <sighs> half of who he used to be weight wise. Like it's insane to watch how fast that fell off. Are you a guy that has to work to be this size or are you naturally bigger or, you know, how much, how much work does that take? So it's crazy. Cause like, I didn't struggle with like, you know, keeping on weight until like this year, like, you know, my rookie year, my second year, you know, I used to be like right at my range, but like, it's like this year, uh, I don't know. It's like, I just started, you know. Burning more calories on yeah, a Sunday. Burning more calories. Yeah. So it's just like, I'm constantly like, when it's weigh-in day, like I'm constantly trying to like, I drink probably like five bottles of water. I eat a great <laughs> meal. Like I'm like, okay, like let's go. I'm trying to get this weight up. But everyone I, out there is now officially mad to hear that the older you're getting, the harder it is for you to keep on weight. Everyone's like, wow, that is what a delightful problem. Yeah, it's it's not easy uh, keeping on 310, <laughs> 15 pounds, Bob. It's not easy at all. When um, you're running that much and working out that much, that's so true. Exactly. Um, how about uh, getting to block for, for Lenny and Rashad? Tell me about these two guys as your running backs. And you talked about how much offensive linemen love the run game. Mm -hmm. That's what you guys really thrive on, want to succeed in, kind of the imposing your will on other people. Knowing those are the two guys behind you, what really stands out to you about that and, and why you guys like blocking for them? Get your popcorn ready. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we block and we just like, okay, like, you know, get to the first and second level, and then after that, they're going to make the show happen. When Lenny back there, I'm expecting him to run over somebody, and I'm like, he's yeah. on the second level, popcorn ready, popcorn ready. <laughs> Um, Rashad, when Rashad back there, I'm like, okay, he get, he get past the second level, it's either he gonna juke somebody mm -hmm. or he's gonna stiff arm somebody. Mm -hmm. Get your popcorn ready. Uh, but it's it's great block for those guys. Um, not even just them two, you know, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, he's, he's an awesome back to watch um, do his thing as well. You know, Gio, you know, just special guys in the backfield. You know, we got a really talented running back room and you know, it's always awesome watching those guys do what they do. You brought up the stiff arm. Do you remember that moment oh, yeah. against I, Seattle? How can I forget? <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. I was just, I was like, you know, battling because I had the flu down there. Yeah. And it was just, it was tough. But like when I seen that, I was like, oh, I got a new jolt of life. I was like, yeah, I got to keep going now. Yeah. But it was crazy. Like to see Rashad do that, I was so happy for him because, you know, like he works hard and, you know, for him to get that shine that, you know, he had, it was, it was just great. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, and then how about these rookie tight ends? I know that they have to work alongside you guys as well and, and work on the, the blocking game. And, and being a rookie tight end is a, is a tough job. They're involved in so many aspects of the offense and all the different things they're asked to do. And we've seen that Co, even though he was known as just the blocking tight end, made some pretty big catches, got a touchdown. And Cade has just had such clutch plays so far this year. What have you seen from them in practice, in meeting rooms, and, and just watching them on Sundays that has excited you and impressed you with them? Those guys are great rookies in general. Like, great guys, just human beings. Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy because, like, Cade and Co are, like, two different people. Like, like Cade is, like, so, like, sweet and gentle and all that, and then Cole's just, like another Ryan Jensen. Like, he's just run through a wall and stuff like that. But those guys really work hard. Um, those guys have been doing a really good job, um, you know, and they got big shoes to fill. You know, we lost Grunt last year, um, so the, I feel like they stepped in. They've done a pretty good job blocking, catching, you know, doing all of that. That's huge. We're talking offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Um, I know that tonight you guys have the offensive line shopping spree uh, to, to take all the kids around, get them some gifts. Uh, you guys are bringing all the holiday cheer, which I think is probably a really wonderful thing to have the day after a game like yesterday to remember, keep things in perspective, give some, you know, remember what you are able to do as an NFL player to bring some joy to, to other people. And I know that um, that's something that is in particular very important to you. I remember that was the first thing I learned about you when you came in as a rookie, that you'd been on the Allstate Good Works team, which is an incredible honor. You're one of just 22 guys across the country recognized for basically being a good dude yep. and caring about other people, serving other people. Tell me, um, where this comes from, why this is so important to you, and what some of the biggest causes are, the things are that you had done that, that earned you that role. So the, the biggest thing for me is, you know, like, you know, all of us, we're blessed to be in the position we're in. Um, right now, you know, I, I, I grew up in, you know, unfortunate situations, um, you know, needing welfare, stuff like that. And, you know, just, you know, having that, that's something that you can never forget. So any time, like, you know, I'm blessed to be in a position I'm in. You know, I said that earlier. Anytime I can help, like, I'm always ready to help. And then, you know, growing up, like, my mom and my dad, like, they're the type of people to give you the skin off their back if you need it. 
Um, so like I just grew up around that, constantly just trying to lend a hand, trying to help other people out. And you know, especially when I got here, you know, or when I got to college, you know, I had resources, I had a platform to help other people out. Um, I had a little bit of money in my pocket, so I was definitely trying to help people out. Um, and then when I got here, it just really took off. Like, you know, just like the, the Christmas thing we about to do uh, tonight, you know, I'm so excited for it. Like you said, like, especially after yesterday, like it's, it's the thing that's getting me going because it's, it's what it's all about. You know, it's, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, it's the time of giving. So, you know, we trying to make a whole bunch of families happy and a whole bunch of kids happy. You know, that's, that's, what's, that's what makes me happy, you know, just seeing those kids smile. What are some of the um, best experiences you've had when it comes to that, of the things when you've been giving back, whether it's college or here, the, some of the, the moments that stand out to you or the things that you feel like you either made the most difference or it had the biggest impact on you? Um, so, like, I, there, there was this uh, organization called Habitat for Humanity that, you know, we helped build houses and stuff like that when I was in college. And, you know, we helped build a house for a family. And then, you know, when they fr finally seen it, just the raw emotion and happiness um, they had, you know, that, that was just everything to me. Um, so I, I really love that. Um, you know, I've, I've been to the Ronald McDonald house, you know, help bake cookies and stuff like that. You know, just, just to see like the happiness that you can bring other people just by you taking the time to help out. You know, that, that's just the thing for me. Like, I love it. Like, it gets me going and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's really nice. I also heard you are even in the business of helping people on your team, uh, I heard from a source you are lending a car <laughs> to someone on the practice squad. Is that true? Yeah, it is. Um, one of my teammates hit me up, say he needed a car, um, and you know he he's just been taking an Uber and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, I got two cars. I got I, I got a truck and I got a Nissan. So I, I was like, you know, just, just take the Nissan, dude. Uh, you know, like you know whatever you got to do, you know, I'm always trying to help out in every way. So yeah, that's amazing. How do you feel like that? has impacted the people around you in here? Do you feel like people take note of that? And, and is that something that you've noticed of the way that not only are you impacting maybe the, the kids you're helping or the other people, but even people here in the building? Yeah, I definitely think uh, people take note of that. Um, you know, you can see like the people, you know, act, you know, they act different. They like, oh, they can trust me more and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's, I really don't do it, you know, for people to act different towards me, anything like that. I really do it out the kindness of my heart. Um, so I don't really look for it, but you know, people definitely, you know, they like, oh, Nick's really a, a good guy. He's really a down to earth guy. You know, I appreciate them thinking of me like that. What do you want said about you at the end of your career, which is hopefully many, 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 many years from now, but what do you want to be known as uh, both on and off the field when you're done? Um, on the field, he was a guy that worked his tail off. He outworked everybody. Um, and you know, his work ethic was crazy. Um, he was a true leader. He was a guy that would go to war with you any day. Um, off the field, he, he was a great man. He was a guy that was literally trying to leave the world better than what he found it. That's incredible. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owl's Nest. It is time for our final segment with the one and only Nick Leverett. Number one in your hearts, number one on the field. So. Your path to getting to this place was a little unconventional. Tell us a little bit about your path through even college, where you played, how that went, and then getting to be a Buccaneer. Okay, so um, I started out at a uh, small HBCU, North Carolina Central University. Um, that was my only Division I offer. Um, I had a whole bunch of D2 offers, so I took that and ran with it. Um, Red shirted my freshman year. It was kind of one of those things where I, th I was thinking like I wasn't gonna be able to play um, I was kind of like, you know, just behind everybody, uh, started to kind of like lose hope. But I, like since then, I've had this hard work mentality where I was going to outwork everybody. Um, and fortunately, like the opportunity arose my freshman year. Um, I ended up starting every game in my career, actually, um, all four years I was playing at North Carolina Central. Well, all three years I was playing at North Carolina Central. Then I was All-American, All-Conference, all that. Uh, ended up grad transferring to Rice University where I got my master's degree. Um, started every game there. Um, and then uh, felt like I had a pretty good senior season. Uh, ended up going undrafted to Tampa. Um, you know, COVID year was a hectic year, real crazy year, um, as many of you remember. Uh, ended up uh, getting released um, and then getting brought back to the practice squad at the beginning of the season, uh, which I was very thankful for. Um, 
and was here the whole season until I want to say the playoffs. We got to the playoffs and I was released um, from the practice squad to bring in a vet. Um, and then I was brought back. Um, I was brought back before I was brought back Green Bay NFC Championship. Um, so I was there that week, and then once we found out we made it to the Super Bowl, I was released again. So yeah, it was it was kind of it was a lot going on. Uh, my my grandfather had just passed away. I had got released like around my birthday. Like it was just a lot. Um, but you know, came back, um, fought my tail off the second year. Uh, ended up making the 53 uh, man roster. Um, but I still wasn't satisfied, you know, I was kind of still that like, you know, like ninth man on the offensive line. Um, and, you know, I felt like, you know, I was worth more, uh, continue to, you know, practice my tail off, work my tail off, um, had a very good mindset, still have a great mindset. Um, and, you know, I was called up upon in the Indianapolis game when Aaron Stinney went, uh, Aaron Stinney went out. Um, and, you know, fortunately I was able to help my team win. Um, it was a very crazy game and, you know, fast forward. You know, I'm here now, you know, starting and, you know, helping my team, contribute to my team as much as I can. That's incredible. That had to be hard to, like I said, maintain the right kind of attitude and mentality during all of that. So now that you're here, you've got this starting role. What are the, the biggest goals that you have for yourself, you know, the rest of the season, career-wise, just what you want to accomplish? Um, I'm definitely striving to be one of the best guards in the league. Um, you know, I, I told my coach, you know, last year, I said, you know, I, I have high aspirations. You know, I want to be... You know, I want to be an all-pro player. I want to be a Pro Bowl player. Um, you know, I had a late start, you know, starting halfway through the season. Um, but I'm still fighting. I'm still preparing, you know, as if I can get that opportunity. Um, but, yeah, just, just finishing out, um, you know, way better than when I started. Um, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly trying to figure out new things to help my game and um, make myself a better player. Like I told you earlier, like, in the beginning, like, one of the things that I really needed to work on was my punch. And, you know, I feel like my punch has gotten really better in the past game. Um, just communicating with, you know, Donnie, Hainsey, all over the offensive line. Um, so you see those type of things. Um, you've seen the trust my teammates have in me. And, you know, that's just something I want to continue to build on. That's amazing. We're talking to offensive lineman Nick Leverett. Uh, so now going against the Cardinals this next week. Um, I know that you're early on. You haven't really gotten to do tons of the game prep yet, but uh, any little things you already kind of know about facing them or, or what's going to be a challenge there? Um, I really haven't looked too much into it. Um, just, you know, having a lot going on today. Uh, we just finished the game. Uh, try to, I really take my uh, Mondays to like clear my mind. Um, just debrief from the other game, you know, recap from, you know, the previous game we just had against Cincinnati and then, you know, just debrief. Um, I had to run run and do some things today. Usually I take a look at the um, the roster, um, their def defensive fronts, um, you know, def their defensive players, you know, type of schemes and stuff like that. But probably when I leave here, I'm probably going to end up doing that. And then what are the, the biggest things you look at game prep wise? Uh, me, I, I look at uh, strategies. Um, I look at, you know, what their defense alignment, like whether they like to penetrate or they like the two gap. Um, I look at linebacker flow, whether they like to hit it downhill or they like to uh, flow. Um, you know, all those things help me in my game and, you know, I can gauge how I need to come off the ball and, you know, what type of runs and stuff like that will be successful. Um, and then, of course, I look at pass rush moves and stuff like that because that will definitely help me out. Um, I just, I'm the type of guy I try to, be the person at their own move. Like I try to figure out what they're gonna do and what's gonna give it away before they can even do it. I like I like to find out like whether they're gonna slant, um, if they bring the wheel down on the ball, they're gonna, they're gonna slant, or if they bring you know buzz, if they bring a safety down. You know what they like to do with, with that, um, different coverages, how they disguise them and stuff like that. You know, I just, I just try to find out every you know single little thing that you know they do and how they give it away. I know that it's going to be on Christmas, which is uh, probably unfortunate from a sort of a personal standpoint, but what are the ways that you and, and your teammates try to still celebrate together? You know, are there certain things in terms of, uh, I think I've seen, is the, is the room decorated down there a little bit? Yep, the room is decorated. So we pretty much decorate our offensive line room every major holiday, um, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, we're doing it for Christmas, um, and, you know, all the other holidays. Uh, but yeah, um, the rookies, you know, really take control of that they've been doing a great job um yeah uh luke and uh, dylan really threw down uh for christmas this like year it. um 
I wouldn't say it's as good as you know me of course, and Tristan you were the and best. John Moshine. Like you know, we we really we really did so. Yes. And then, like they took our ideas and stuff, but yeah, they definitely did a good job. It looks great in there. Is there a gift swap happening? Yes, there is a gift swap. We have a white elephant going on. Um, I don't know what day, but we have one coming up. Do you feel like you're going to win it potentially with your gift giving? Is it funny? Is it is it good gifts? Like, what's the goal here? So we have we have two separate ones. We have the white elephant where we have like the actual great gifts that are like you know we we actually use, and then we got like a a make fun gag gift yes. um, that we do before where we pick on like we we put names in a hat, we like draw the names out of hat, and like you know whoever you got, you got what a couple weeks to pick out like what you want to get them and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like that's the that's the funny like ha ha gift, um, and that's actually coming up I think in a couple of days too. So I'm excited to see you know what guys have gotten and like who got me and how they think they're gonna pick on me. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> how about are you a, a Christmas like m movies music kind of guy? Absolutely. Like one thing about me, like I love Christmas. Like I'm the type of guy I have a Christmas playlist on my phone, and wow. I don't open it until December. Or better oh, yet, wow. after Thanksgiving. So you're, yeah, you're definitely, you're not the after Halloween guy. Mm -mm. That's, nah, I can't. I knew I liked you. Yeah, because like, it's, it's just, for me, it's like so sacred. And it's just like, you can't do it too early. And when it happens, like when it, when the time is right, you have to just fully go. Exactly. And like, that's what I do. Like, you know, in the NFL, it's been harder to do it. But like when I was in college, we was done by Thanksgiving. So yeah. like. Christmas Freeform has a thing where like they have the 25 days of Christmas. I used to watch Christmas movies every night. Every night. Um, I go like I just bought a house, so like I've been decorating and everything wow. on my own. Wow, not even just the bachelor pad of like no decorations. Look at you. you no, know, I'm doing everything on my own. You know, I got my dog sitting beside me, just watching me. I'm, I'm hanging up uh, stockings with my initial and his initial and. <laughs> It's literally just me and him, and like we just going around the house. I bought an inflatable for my front yard and put up a Christmas tree and everything. So yeah, I go crazy for Christmas. And I feel like you need to tell everybody the kind of dog you have so that everybody can <laughs> properly shame you for this. <laughs> well, it's, it's the story behind it, but I do have a two-year-old, a now two-year-old uh, Yorkie Poodle. Um, <laughs> he just turned two on the 17th. Um, there's a long story behind it. It wasn't originally for me, but I ended up taking responsibility for him and his he has been a little bundle of joy for me um a lot of the guys in the office line room know about him um they pick on him everything like that but they know how much i love him and you know he he's a he's definitely a little bundle of joy he's like the little mascot of the of the room now he's, he's have they made fun of you for this yeah yeah i figured uh, plenty of times plenty. like not not even just the office line room because like a lot of people on the team know i got him because yeah. i'm always posting them on social media um, but I, I brought him over here a few times. And every, like everybody loves him. He's just so energetic and stuff like that. Sounds just like you, you know, yep. energetic, bringing yep. the joy. I love it. Well, That's Nick, my twin. thank you so much for joining us. This has been uh, wonderful to talk to you, and I hope you have as good a Christmas as possible being on the road. And good luck against the Cardinals. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks to all of you guys for joining us. This has been Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio.